Hi and welcome to another video. Today I want to answer one question that I get asked many, many, many times. What sort of specs do I need to run Photoshop and Lightroom nice and smooth? Okay, then. so first of all comes RAM. RAM. So get as more RAM as you can afford into your machine. But let's say if you're buying a laptop, make sure it will be. If you, let's say an 8 gig, make sure you can upgrade in the future, if you can't afford it right now, to 16 gig. Or if you're buying a 16 gig, make sure you can upgrade to 32. And if you buy 32, make sure you can upgrade to 64. And same applies to a computer. Okay then, so this is it. Now, what about processor? Uh, Photoshop and the Lightroom, obviously they need a fast processor. So the, more, the, the faster the clock speed of the processor, the better. Uh, cores they are uh, somehow important but not very important so you don't know to go you don't need to go crazy with a 64 thread uh, 64 core thread ripper or whatever so I've got I'm going to build a computer especially to work with the Photoshop and Lightroom and I'm going through all the stuff I've got here and why I'm choosing them so hopefully this will help you if you're building a PC or if you're buying a PC or whatever. So, first things first. First is the processor. I bought AMD Ryzen 7 2700X. So this is an 8 core 16 thread uh, CPU with a 3.7 gigahertz uh, base clock and with a turbo with 4.3. So, it's quite high clock speed. Uh, 8 cores, do you need 8 cores? No, you don't. You can get away with the uh, six cores, but this the CPU, the price came down so much after the Ryzen 3 came out. And this is an amazing CPU. I've got it myself on my machine. So, and plus comes with a cooler already. So, this is it. This is the CPU I'm going to be using. As I mentioned before, RAM is very important. Uh, I'm going to be using fast RAM, so 3000 3, megahertz RAM. And, uh, Altogether, it will be 64 gig of RAM. Obviously, as I mentioned before, you need to make sure that the computer uh, can be upgraded uh, in terms of RAM. So this is why I've got this motherboard. This motherboard can take up to 64 gig RAM. It has four slots, I've got four sticks, so it will be absolutely amazing. Do you need 64 gigs of RAM? No, you don't. You can get away with 16 gig RAM. If you're doing basic stuff, 16 gig RAM is absolutely fine. It will run nice and smooth. Uh, but in Photoshop, when you start adding layers, and then if you're working, if your workflow starts in Lightroom and then going to Photoshop and then going to Lightroom again, obviously having the extra RAM obviously it will help you in your workflow. And then let's say you've got something else open, let's say Nick software or whatever, whatever you like to use on your workflow. So. We spoke about CPU, RAM, and now this amazing uh, motherboard. This, um, this motherboard is a Tomahawk Max B450. This motherboard, actually, it's an amazing motherboard and supports already Ryzen 3 series as well. So this PC I'm building, it's for a friend of mine. This is a Ryzen 2. Uh, I know for a fact this motherboard will take Ryzen 3 and next year Ryzen 4 will come out and this motherboard will be also uh, good enough for that. It's a, it has plenty of nice features, nice cool, cool, cool VRMs, so it has everything you need on a, on, a, on a motherboard. So motherboard it's done. Now one thing that a lot of people don't, they don't realize Photoshop and Lightroom and the Bridge and uh, Cam Raw not only need fast RAM, fast processor, but they also need fast graphics card. Yes, if, if you see like when the updates come out, they say like uh, OpenGL, uh, graphics card intensive, uh, optimized for GPU, this is it. This is it. Like Photoshop uses it. If you don't have a proper proper graphics card, like the filter gallery in Photoshop, Liquify, 
and other features, they won't run as smooth as when you go dedicate the card. And the same applies to Lightroom and uh, Cam Raw. So, how much VRAM do you need? Well, you can do easily 4, four gig VRAM, uh, they're quite cheap these days, but for just a bit more money, you know, and I'm talking about 30, 40 quid, you can get a 6 gig uh, VRAM. So this graphics card is an MSI 1660, it's an uh, overclocked, uh, overclocked edition, it's an amazing uh, graphics card. It will allow you to connect four monitors, so it's fast enough, so you can't go wrong. 4K VR ready if you want to go that far. So this is very important. A lot of people think yeah, every uh, graphics card only for gamers. No. If you have a workstation, you need a nice graphics card as well. So I'm done in here. So I've got a 120 gig SSD hard drive. This hard drive, it will be only used for cache in Photoshop, Lightroom and Bridge. Uh, and uh, camera raw, and it will be also uh, the scratch disk, user scratch disk. This is that's the thing. When you buy a computer, you only have one hard drive. If you're using the scratch disk, the the same as the main disk, or oh, gets full, gets slower. So SSD, super fast hard drive. Uh, so you won't have any issues whatsoever. That's a must. Another thing that I don't have here because I'm still waiting for the for that is a M.2 NM, NVMe hard drive. That is a small hard drive that goes directly into the motherboard. This one here, we're talking about 500 megabytes per second with read and write. The M.2, we're talking about speeds of 3000 uh, megabytes, so 3 gig per second. So. It will be ultra fast, connected straight to the motherboard. That's where I'm going to be installing the operating system and all of the programs. And obviously, you still have some storage there. Speaking about storage, I've got two boxes here, one and two. And because my friend is a photographer, obviously, he needs storage. And fair enough, he backs up his stuff. But he, ha he added two six terabytes barracudas uh, to the system, so this way you will have everything there on the computer. So, well, if he fancies to go through all the photos that he took in the past, he can go and he can add some more as well. So, these are just normal hard drives and nothing too fancy, just Seagate because they are amazing. I've been using them for years and absolutely fantastic. They're not as fast as the SSD, but it's to back up. Whatever you need, it's there, so that's another thing. It's great. So, now comes to another two things, and this is obviously if you want to use it. So, as a photographer, obviously, you've got memory cards, you've got dongles that you get, and then you plug into the, your computer. But in this case, I've got this. This is a card reader, so basically, it's an internal card reader, it will be fitted into the case, and reads normal format uh, memory cards and plus has a USB at the front as well but the case has, and I'll show you in a second the case uh, has USB ports at the front anyway so this is just so you avoid having any dongles you go out to take some photos you just connect it to the computer your memory card import job done so this is one thing and a DVD writer do you need one DVD writer these days? Uh, not really most of the people they don't need it. It's always handy to have it. And for this was really cheap uh, Aces, so it's not. It's a good make, well-known make. And uh, if we're building a PC, might as well include this. This is his option, and uh, I'm happy to do it anyway. So now let's go to the case. The case I've got. Is a Corsair Carbide Series 100R Silent Edition. So, this case, I've worked with this case in the past and it's absolutely fantastic. And when you buy any case, make sure that this is the mid tower. I know for a fact it will fit the full size ATX 
motherboard, which is this one a full size. Obviously, this takes smaller motherboards as well. The reason why I went for full size ATX is because I've got more expansion PS, PCI ex, uh, Express slots. So if I want to add, a, uh, I've got moment the graphics card like it, I'm going to add to. I've got uh, uh, nothing else to add. But let's say you want to add Wi-Fi, sound card, whatever. This will cope with that. And when buying a case, make sure that obviously the motherboard will fit in the case. Also, as you may remember, just I've just mentioned now, I've got two of these. So I've got the the card reader and the DVD writer. Make sure there's obviously the slots at uh, the front that you can add them in here. So there are some cool um, cases out there, but you can't fit these. So this is one thing. Another thing is go for a nice make, a well-known brand. Corsair, they're amazing. Most of I've got plenty of stuff from Corsair on my own system, and like you can see, even the RAM is Corsair. They're amazing, and they invest a lot of time on designing the cases, and they're going test airflow and the cable management, make sure everything is nice and neat and looks good, and it's efficient. This. This case comes with one fan on the back, extraction fan, and if you go to a shop and you buy a PC, they always come with a fan. Is it enough? No, it's not. It's not enough. So to make the most of the airflow of this case, I've got extra three fans to, do, to put on the case. So it will be one on the front, one on the back, and two on the top. This way, nice airflow, through the entire system and it will run nice and cool, therefore more efficient and it will last longer. So, this has headphone jack and microphone at the front and the USB 2.0 in 3.1. So, as I mentioned on the card reader there's a USB, you still have some on the case itself. So I'm just going to put it here. <coughs> Obviously you need power. And when I say power, I don't mean processing power graphics card power, you need actual power to power the machine. I, have, I went to Cooler Master 750 watt bronze certified, 80 plus, and it's a bit of an overkill, 750 watts for this system, it's more than enough, but this doesn't mean that we'll be using 750 watts all the time, so it only uses as much uh, depending on how much you push in the system. But I always go higher, no, because first of all, in the future, if you want to upgrade this for RTX 2080 Ti, and I'm talking about big graphics card, you can because you'll have enough power to run it. But also, because every every power supply they have a fan, and obviously, if it's pushing it a lot, the fan keeps on spinning just to keep it cool. The, the PSU, so. This moment in time, I'm talking probably about 400 watts with all this stuff. Not even that, not even that, no way. But let's say for 400 watts. If I was to buy a 500 watts power supply, the fan will be spinning most of the time. So, as it is, uh, it's 750, it's great for, to upgrade. It's semi-modular, so you only connect the cables you want to connect, and it will run nice and quiet. So, I think this is it. Like I said, I'm just waiting for the M.2 and NVMe hard drive, and then I'm ready to build a computer. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, share this video with your friends, and if you have any questions, feel free to ask. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.